Hello Technobrise, you must have gone through the video lecture on Lighthouse project at Agartala where we are using a hybrid system comprising of steel structural system for uh, beam and columns and uh, light gauge steel uh, uh, frame for wall panels. Uh, in the e-module, we have also given you enough reference material uh, in form of audio audiovisual films, lectures, presentations, books, certificates, circulars, etc. And uh, it is highly recommended that you must go through all of them and use them as frequently as required. This collection of reference material is unique because you won't be able to find uh, this kind of uh, collection of material at one place. So always keep a copy of it. Having gone through the lecture, there must have been several uh, queries, doubts in your mind. In order to answer your uh, queries, what I have done here is that based on my experience and interaction with stakeholders at various platforms, I have created uh, a section of FAQ in the presentation form, uh, uh, which I'm going to present to you now. Most of the questions being asked uh, uh, can be divided into these eight uh, broad areas and which I will explain you uh, one by one. First, and before getting into these questions, uh, let me just give you a brief about the, the, the project at Agatala. Uh, thousand houses are being constructed in a hybrid system comprising of a uh, engineered steel structural system or for beam and columns, whereas for walls, we are using light gauge steel frame system. Thousand houses, uh, G plus six configurations so of seven story, and the total overall project cost is 162.5 crores. First and foremost question which is being asked uh, is about cost. What is the cost per square foot? So uh, if we look at the tendered cost, awarded cost, uh, uh, the, the lighthouse project at Agartala per flat cost with innovative technology, the, the, the technology which we are using is 16.25 lakh as compared to 14.5 uh, lakh uh, is the cost uh, with conventional construction system. Conventional construction system um, here means RCC frame construction with uh, brick assembly as well. So it is around 11% higher. And why this 11% high? Because uh, here in Agatala, the, the, the soil conditions are such because the, uh, the, that we have to use pile. And uh, there are uh, more than 1,000 piles being, uh, you know, uh, uh, constructed here in Agatala and each pile uh, has a length of 30 meters and the diameter of pile is two feet. It's 60, 600 mm. So there are more than 1000, to be specific, there are 1700 piles um, uh, of length 30 meters and um, uh, dia two feet or 600 mm. So, on account of that, the cost is coming slightly higher, eleven percent higher. Uh, that is one region. The second region, Agartala, being in northeast, the, the cost of material, uh, you know, the basic uh, conventional material that is uh, cement, brick, sand, aggregates, and even steel, you know, uh, you know, the, the transportation cost is quite high. Uh, so, because of these regions, the cost is slightly higher here. Uh, also, when we talk about cost, there are a few other things which I would like uh, you to understand. Uh, cost not only depends on technology, but it depends on a number of other factors, such as size of the project, uh, its location. As I told you, Agatala being uh, in Northeast, uh, the transportation costs and availability of material is um, not uh, that good. So the, the cost escalates. Then geoclimatic profile, again, um, um, Agatala falls in zone five. So whether you are in high seismic zone or you, 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 you are in, a, in, a, in, in an area which have high wind velocity or cyclone prone, prone areas, so the cost will definitely increase. Then soil is straight up being marshy land or black cotton soil or water table is high. Uh, you need to spend a lot on the uh, foundation as well. Availability of material and uh, factory and accessibility of site. Also, because these are innovative technologies, so economies of scale, or uh, which is also known as critical mass, that uh, you require at least minimum number of houses or minimum built up area to make these technologies viable, um, viable and comparable with commercial, or commercial construction. But the underlying factor is once these technologies are mainstream, then the cost will automatically come down. So let's not bother that much about cost because when we are talking about cost here, the technology comes with the several added, uh, you know, advantages and, uh, you know, like 
resource efficiency because uh, we are talking about sustainability nowadays uh, for any civil engineering or any building and infrastructure we are doing so these technologies offer resource efficiency in construction environment friendliness energy efficiency because embodied energy of these materials um, is less uh, cost effectiveness uh, so it's not the initial cost but cost effectiveness these systems are cost effective over the, the service life of your building and uh, uh, last but not the least we should not forget that uh, the, 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 these new systems are speedier construction systems enabling faster delivery of houses so uh, time uh, the, there is considerable reduction in uh, in completion time of, of a project and that can directly be related with the cost. So, um, you know, earlier you finish, less is the cost, less is the cost escalation and less uh, are the um, other problem associated with the, with the project. Also, <clears throat> here, um, the, 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 the structure we are constructing is six story structures. So, we are using a hybrid system, but uh, up to four story, we you know the, the, we have recommended the light gauge steel construction system. Standalone light gauge steel system can be used up to four story. And uh, if you use light gauge steel construction uh, up to four story, it, the cost comes um, you know ten to fifteen percent less than your conventional construction cost. And even during this pandemic, uh, all over the world, you know most of the, the COVID centers, isolation wards, and if you want to erect a isolated single story structure, that can be that can easily be done with light gauge steel structure, um, light gauge steel structure frame uh, uh, combined with the steel structure frame. So, um, you know, it's quite economical uh, up to four story. Structure performance is the next uh, area where, where a lot of uh, doubt, uh, you know, where a lot of doubts uh, come to, to our minds. So let me tell you, lightweight construction methodology is becoming very popular in, in India and being lightweight. So the, the, the being lightweight, there are other added advantages uh, like, like uh, you know, reduction in the, 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 the cell weight of the building, thereby reducing the lo uh, load on the foundation and thereby, you know, having economical design. Um, then um, also, you know, when you are using the steel and uh, light gauge uh, steel, you know, like uh, hot rolled steel and light gauge steel is known as cold form steel. So its combination, you know, um, you know, uh, brings economy and uh, you get superior structural performance. Because if we compare RCC uh, construction with the steel construction, RCC construction concrete by its very nature um, cannot take any tension, whereas uh, steel has excellent uh, uh, tensile property. And uh, so when we are constructing a building in a disaster prone area, the, steel and we are going high rise then steel is a better uh, proposition um, earlier steel was not being used that much in building construction but now with the availability of uh, tubular lightweight tubular sections and press uh, steel sections and uh, you know built up uh, sections in the factory um, uh, in the steel factory uh, all these things help in bringing down the steel requirements help in bringing economical design and economical construction and superior structural performance also, uh, this hybrid construction is uh, composite and mixed construction, and it is an alternate construction practices, uh, and it helps uh, in uh, you know higher speed uh, and lightweight construction. And as I told you, lightweight steel construction um, provide better seismic resistance, uh, and thereby in, uh, and uh, thereby improve the structure performance. Also, um, uh, these systems are uh, have excellent fire retarded uh, retardness. Uh, they are durable and uh, they can easily be maintained because most of the things are being done in the factory. And then all you are doing is uh, you know assembling them at site with the um, uh, you know welded connections or with the mechanical connectors using the nut and bolts. All the, all of these things lead to a superior structural performance. Um, also, let me tell you here that um, any structure, uh, structural performance is also associated with your proper execution of a project or a, um, uh, or a technology. No innovative technology comes with the you know, guaranteed structural performance unless it is executed properly on site with uh, checks and balances as regards quality control and assurance. Also, um, good workmanship is the underlying, uh, you know, underlying principle. Um, any any construction you do, you need to have good workmanship, a strict quality control, better quality assurance, and uh, proper execution to, to, to have improved structural performance.
functional performance, if we talk about these light gauge panels, uh, are you know, uh, in here we are using them as infill wall panels. So we have, um, you know, wall panel is light gauge panel, and uh, the, uh, the, the outer faces of these light gauge panels are, uh, you know, are of uh, cement fiber board or uh, calcium silicate board, or it can be any other board. So you have a light gauge panel and with the faces uh, or the, or of cement boards. So the, the hollow space in between the cement board is light gauge panel and it can be filled uh, with a thermally insulated material like rock wool or lightweight concrete. Here in this project, we are using lightweight concrete and instead of cement board, we are using precast cement board. Uh, so this uh, this um, you know the core uh, uh, the, the core material provides better summer thermal insulation with uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, very less u value of thermal transportance which helps in uh, thermal efficiency and uh, this thermal efficiency if you if, 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 because of this uh, the thermally efficient light gauge steel wall panel the overall energy demand of building is also considerably so uh, the, the the energy required for HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, get um, get considerably reduced, thereby reducing the life cycle cost of the building. So during the service life of your building, you uh, you require less energy. Another question being raised is about fire rating. So all these wall panels uh, are rated for uh, um, you know for the fire resistance, and uh, also um, whenever we undertake any construction, um, the, these wall panels need to comply with national existing national international code rules of fire rating. So um, because fire also pose a pose a hazard, and therefore uh, this can be this has to be. Fire rated these panels as well as the construction which we are doing. Um, and then further, uh, in the, if you have, uh, you know, you can always in because steel gauge, uh, the light gauge, cold form steel or this uh, hot roll steel is further encased. Uh, so because of encasing, um, the, the, there are uh, the fire fire, fire hazards are minimized. Um, these systems are durable because they provide excellence because these are finished surface quality texture is very good they are easily maintainable so um, they are durable and thereby improve the uh, functional uh, performance uh, as regards for um, compatibility with conventional finishing items in terms of door window frames uh, door shutters um, tiles you know laying the pipelines for um, sewage and uh, you know water pipelines taps and all so uh, this particular system is quite compatible steel structure system and light gauge uh, wall panels are quite compatible uh, with the uh, conventional uh, construction systems. Joints and connections being structural metallic connection and um, the, you know light gauge steel construction is also joint and uh, you know you have uh, the mechanical connectors you can do you know um, mechanically it's it's called dry uh, dry jointing where you know through angles plates channel bars anchors fasteners and bolts uh, you can connect um, steel um, you know steel beam and columns and for light gauge steel connections also uh, it, it, it can easily be done through self driven metal screws and design spacing, ensuring continuity and structural integrity between elements for load transfer. So, connecting a light gauge wall panel, you, you use self driven screws, and for connecting the steel frame together, you can use uh, mechanical connectors in form of angles, plates, and uh, uh, channel bars, anchors, and fasteners. Also, to have improved um, seismic performance, all these connections uh, are properly designed and detailed so as to avoid failure of connections by shearing. Um, and um, the, you know the metal failure. So if you are doing weld, welded joints or you are doing nut bolt, you, you need to see they, they should not fail in the brittle. Uh, the brittle uh, failure need to be avoided, and the, the, that is why you need to uh, properly design uh, those uh, connections as well. So um, with these um, innovative technologies or with this kind of system, always uh, you need to do proper design. Um, each uh, joint and connection need to be designed properly for the the the, the, the loads um, for the, the the bending moment shear force uh, and any torsional and actual force which is coming on the joint for that it need to be properly designed and then it need to be properly detailed and detailing means here uh, that how if you are doing the nut bolt connections how many bolts you require what should be the die of that bolt how much um, you know, you know then how do you connect that bolt with the, with the steel um, columns through a desert plate? Then what should be the dimension of that desert plate? What should be the edge distance? And all these things need to be designed and there are codes available. And uh, the, the bottom line is you need to avoid a brittle failure and uh, sharing, uh, sharing failure. 
okay so uh, proper designing and detailing is also very important so joint and connections uh, for these kind of <coughs> systems are um, um, uh, i mean ensure structural integrity and uh, they are uh, uh, there is absolutely no problem about that interactions. then design aids yes for steel and light gauge for uh, fortunately for both uh, we have total provisions we have is 800 2007 and then for two i for cold form steel also for light gauge which is also known as light gauge steel we have is 801 this, uh, this is uh, reaffirmed recently and it is also being verified. Then we also have National Building Code, which is compilation of um, the, most of the codes. And uh, in that code also, we have for mention of uh, all these things uh, about the steel and uh, light gauge. Uh, then there are softwares available uh, where you can model the steel, steel building uh, as well as light gauge steel building. Um, the softwares like ETAT, SAF, SAF, SAFE, STAT2, Abacus, they can be used and you can model the building. You can a 2D model, 2D planner model, or you can create a 3D volumetric model. You can carry out linear, non-linear, and any kind of analysis uh, can also be carried out. And then, um, based on the analysis, uh, analysis result for bus flow combination, you can always design your steel and light gauge steel uh, volumes. Also, another thing that uh, all these technologies, uh, you know, the, the technology providers, they have their own um, the customized softwares, um, and through those softwares, uh, the, they design their buildings and. Uh, uh, the, the, those softwares can also be used. So design aids are available uh, for uh, all these new technologies and coding companies are also available. As regards uh, schedule of rate, because being a steel structure and being a steel building, uh, the, the schedule of rate is available and uh, also CBWB has recently published DSR 2016 um, uh, in which they have uh, 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 given uh, this system as well. Uh, another thing I want to tell you here that in case uh, Indian standard is not available, there is no need to worry. We can always refer to Indian, uh, international standards, and international standards are being allowed by BLS. Also, in absence of any uh, certification, you, the, the BMTPC is being authorized, uh, and there is mention in National Building Code as well that um, the performance appraisal certificate issued by BMTPC for these new technologies can be uh, referred uh, and can be used for further implementation. Of technologies in the field. Um, also, the, 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 the technology which we are talking about has been a, is uh, one of the shortest technologies in the global housing uh, technology challenge of India. So, um, for loads, there are these codes which are available and which need to be the, you know the, the referred to uh, for load calculations. Other than earthquake load, for earthquake load, we have 0.893 uh, is the, the most important code for the little load, little load cal uh, calculations. Then for steel, there are whole you know whole lot of codes available for structural steel. But the most important code when you are doing um, you know, hot roll steel using hot roll steel is IS 800, which was reaffirmed in 2006-17. Then for light gauge, again there is a code 8041, which was reaffirmed in 2016. Then for all kind of connections for road sections, for welding, for high strength bolts, um, for hollow steel sections, we have um, you know. Uh, Plenty of codes, and these codes need to be referred, and they, these codes need to be complied with when, whenever we are doing this kind of uh, combination. Uh, you know, uh, the conventional uh, footing, if you are using and uh, wherever you are using the RCC, then you can uh, refer these codes. So, the IS456 is the most important code for RCC. And uh, in addition, there are other codes. 1786 is the, uh, the, the code for, you know, uh, for, for specifications of uh, enforcement bars. Then for foundations, uh, here conventional foundation is being used and for pile um, foundation you have a separate code, for rough you have a separate code and uh, for shallow foundations you have uh, you know, 80 is the air port. Additions and alteration because these are pre-engineered buildings, so addition and alteration at the later stage uh, yeah, is difficult to do, but uh, I will not say it is impossible, it, it, it can be done, but you, you have to do it with great care and with uh, great engineering judgment and uh, my advice would be 
always seek the help of the technology provider or help of expert because all these buildings are pre-designed, pre-engineered in the factory and then constructed, adapted uh, on a pre-sequential manner. So any any change at a later stage may um, change the structural, uh, you know, uh, structural behavior and thereby affect uh, the structural integrity of your entire building. So um, uh, additions and alterations uh, are a bit tricky and need to be uh, uh, done with utmost uh, care. Uh, however, the, the light gauge steel construction, because uh, the, the, these are dry wall construction, so these panels can be removed um, uh, you know, uh, for making some alterations in the wall system. Maintenance of services. Services is again a, a, a very important thing, and uh, during the service, um, you know, the life of building normally we do um, encounter problems related with leakages and damages to service lines and all. So again, it is difficult to do, but um, you know, in light gauge in drywall construction, it can be done by removing those panels. And uh, but again, you see, you need to seek the help of the skilled workforce. Uh, but um, again, when you we are doing this, we are working with these new technologies. Um, proper workmanship and precise installation of service is is of utmost importance joining you know two pipes you know laying a lay, lay, laying a, a wc or um, you know the taps and other things you have to do proper jointing so as to you know make it durable and so as to you know um, have that uh, service um, hassle free uh, during the service life of building uh, you need to do it properly with proper workmanship and you have to install it uh, precisely. However, um, another important thing is that we need to carry out regular preventive maintenance. And regular preventive maintenance means here that we need to check the lines, conduits, water flow, uh, you know, clogged drains need to be cleaned uh, before the onset of monsoon and all these preventive maintenance, uh, you know, will help maintain the services so that you don't encounter these things at a later stage. Uh, also, one very important thing here is being steel construction and being all drywall construction and you are having light gauge steel, um, you know, wall and you have a column of RCC, you have a column of steel and then you have a deck slab. So all the joints which are uh, coming at the, you know, the beam and the column level or at the slab level or where, wherever you are fixing the walls, all these, uh, you know, uh, joints should be properly cladded and uh, you need to do uh, plugging of uh, the joint. All joints need to be plugged uh, so that there is no ingress of water because what happens at the later stage when you find the, the, the water is leaking from some corner or other, you won't be able to find uh, the, the source of that leakage. So proper cladding of all the joints and plugging with the, the, the proper engineering need to be carried out at, at the before, you know, when before, beforehand. Uh, so the maintenance of services, uh, you know, at a later stage is uh, a difficult proposition, but it can be done uh, with the help of the skilled uh, workforce. Capacities, uh, again, capacities, when we talk about uh, right now, there are few professionals in terms of architects and engineers who can carry out uh, customized uh, design and uh, construction for these kind of uh, uh, innovative technologies, but uh, concerted efforts are being uh, made uh, at the government of India level. We are also running a course called Navriti, where uh, we are doing um, you know, a week-long training uh, on these uh, new technologies through experts uh, uh, to the to the stakeholders. Also, this e module of uh, uh, for technology is a uh, stepping stone towards capacity building. Also, uh, at the you know uh, our objective is that uh, these uh, technologies should find uh, mention in the academic curriculum of uh, um, universities and uh, technical institutions. And once they are included in the academic curriculum, uh, then uh, the engineers and architects who are coming, fresh graduates who are coming out from uh, these institutions, will have enough knowledge and uh, we will have enough capacities. Um, as regards to construction and executing the projects, there are again few agencies with recruited experience to execute such kind of large projects. But in the, the in the wake of um, you know Atmanirbha Bharat and Make in India call given by Honorable Prime Minister, now more and more uh, new entrants, startups. Mm, uh, and um, industries, entrepreneurs are joining the construction sector. A lot of you know young people and young blood. Uh, they are uh, entering. In, they are venturing and entering into this um, you know exciting field of innovative technologies. And uh, I'm sure then in times of come, we will have very healthy and good competition.
uh, the new technologies also require a special set of skills and therefore green workforce is the need is needed is, um, but uh, um, you, you you know you can always impart on online um, on-site tra uh, training to this uh, the manpower to make them skill uh, make them uh, to, to 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 make them skill uh, skilled for for the for the technology as regards on a skilled labor um, you know a, a bit of uh, on-site training is required because here um, the construction is slightly different than your conventional construction because you are you know you know assembling erecting uh, then aligning and then you are doing nut and bolt training. so most of the construction is dry wall so you, you know, that unskilled labor how to lift how to operate um, your different you know equipments and machinery so unskilled labor also required a bit of on-site training. With this, I, I, I hope that I'm able to cover the, most of the, the, the queries in these broad areas, but in case you have any other clarification or any other doubt, or if you want to add anything else, please do write to me on my email ID sk.bmtbc.org and uh, I will try to attend to your queries and try to answer them to the best of my uh, capabilities. Thank you very much.